another blistering hot day. Uh, the wife wants to go fishing, which I never ever mind that. Uh, but we haven't got any bait apart from dog biscuit. Uh, quite fancy catching tilapia. If you use dog biscuit, quite often you get the, the catfish. So um, I've got my shrimp pots ready. I'm just going to pop them in the lake. Leave them in there for half an hour or an hour. Come back and check them. And hopefully we'll have plenty of bait. We have more than enough. We can't catch any fish. We've got plenty of shrimp. We're having shrimp for dinner. It's all a bit noisy today. We've been moving all the goats around. So the majority of the herd's in the jungle around the back. But we've put two young adolescent girls on, the, on Goat Island to meet Mr. Bullseye. So it's time for Natasha and and Heidi to uh, meet the main man. Geraldine, the old girl, she's a bit worse for wear. Um, she used to be number one for a while, but she's down the pecking order now and she's gradually getting picked off by the other one. So she's gonna stay on the island until it's time for her to go. Over yonder, uh, we've moved, how many was it? Uh, 10 kids today. So they've all come away from their mums. And the and don't we know it? My word, what a uh, what a racket it was! But they're all in place now. Everyone's where they should be. Everyone had their shots yesterday. Everyone's also had a, an oral uh, worm medication as well. So uh, it's time to just kick back and uh, wet a line. I'm going to put one down here. The culvert always seems to do well or near to it. Now you've got spikes on the end of these and just push them into the mud. That's about the right sort of depth. You don't want to be putting it in really deep. Okay. I've actually hung them off the side there as well and it's done quite well. Always a good idea if you can find any sort of little feature in the water, whether it's just a bit of grass or reeds growing, weeds, anything like that, uh, or like this. This bit goes into the water as the water level drops in the dry season and the goats can't get past it. You see a lot of catfish splashing around here, so I reckon we could be in for a few, few shrimp here. I reckon if we throw that a little bit further out, There we go, it's on a bit of a slope there. Nice one. I probably got your fall in the viewfinder there, but never mind. Not overly sure where to fish today, whether to fish the, the lake. I've seen a lot of tilapia in here recently and they're nice and fat. Also a lot of the wild fish that we've put in here seem to be growing and breeding very well. Uh, or get some out of the, uh, the, the fish ponds near the house. I quite like doing that, although there's a lot of small ones. When you get the stuff that we're not really interested in eating, then we just throw them in the lake anyway. So it helps to continually thin out those ponds. But they're going to get drained down anyway soon. So I, I, I don't know. See what the missus says. It's up to her anyway, isn't it? Don't really want to fish the fence pond where all the big stuff's in there. For one, it's hard to get a bite, and uh, it's a bit hot. I, I don't fancy eating a twenty-pound make on catfish. <laughs> couple of cage here tilapia will do me but there are some good snakehead in there so I don't know. Two lights fishing in there but then after about 10 minutes she hasn't had her bite she gets all stroppy and moves. Walking catfish pond. I can't keep up with the, well there's two things, I can't keep up eating all the catfish and the other thing is I can't keep up taking all the hyacinth out. As I've nicknamed it before it's the pond that keeps giving. I don't think it'll ever run out. We've given our recent crayfish trapping escapades a bit of a break. We've now pretty much reached full capacity uh, for brood stock in all the tanks that we've got. Uh, we are looking to expand as uh, the business continues to grow. Now the rains have come, or it certainly seems that way. We've started transplanting a lot of our trees. I know a lot of you have been saying, get some trees up, mate. Get a canopy over your ground. Well, this is what we've been waiting for. We didn't want to do it in the dry season. 
Gallengal still growing in the moon rock. I've been gradually moving that every time we, we dig some up for tune to use in the cooking. Then uh, anything that's left over, I'll put in some proper soil. All along here, I've been planting up our papaya seedlings. Probably more luck than judgment, but we generally do very well with transplanting papayas. I know some of you have said in the past, uh, it's, it's very, very tricky because they've got a long tap root and they don't like being disturbed. I've got about four or five in the same, the same pot growing from seed and then just pop them all in in one go. Let them grow and then just, just thin out the crap ones. I even popped a random chilli in there. First flower. Look at that guys. This portion of the farm's turning into Teletubby land. Beautiful green. I will be doing an update on the palms as well and my mulchalizing. I'm just so pleased and feel very fortunate that what we've tried on the farm seems to be working the majority of the time now. After so many failures and uh, the device of doing it this way and that way, you know, we seem to have, I don't know, gradually stumbled and bumbled our way along and things are just going nicely now. I don't know whether it comes across in the videos or not, but I certainly don't think we were stressed out before, but now, now we seem to have settled upon a formula that works for us and the sort of people we are and with the land we've got. Um, it's it's even more enjoyable now. You know, the things that um, didn't work out well or we didn't enjoy, uh, we just binned off. And the stuff that seems to be working just accelerated it, just carried on and improved things. I mean, they, these nearly died not too long ago. Ridiculous, isn't it? Some things just pop in your head and you have a go at and you think, don't know if that'll work or not. And you're like, whoa, hang on a minute. It's it's going quite well. Here's a bit that I, I just think's been brilliant. Really, really cool. Just look how quick our hyacinth has come back. So it was only a couple of weeks ago. This was all brown and crusty and uh, holding on to dear life at the bottom of this ditch. As soon as the rains come, it uproots itself, springs back into life. Brilliant. We haven't had to restock any of it. All tiny little new ones there. Brilliant. The uh, morning glory starting to grow again. I wanted to come out two days ago and record it. And I'll be honest, it's just bloody bone idle, guys. I just ran out of time. I didn't make time. Don't make excuses, Lee. Uh, this little river was just full of frog sport. And that is not an exagger over exaggeration. It was everywhere. And it was from the little... Uh, wild frogs, uh, toads, the chubby-faced bullfrogs, or the, the, the painted Asian bullfrogs, and of course the big bullfrogs as well. And it was just ridiculous, the amount in there. And they're all gone now, which means, okay, some of them have been eaten, but, you know, a lot of them will be now tadpoles. But of course, with every uh, up, there's usually a down, now, I'm not knocking the locals at all, uh, and we used to do this, and we sometimes still do. As soon as the rains come, the frogs and the, the toads come out, and everyone just cashes in on it. You know, it's, they sell for quite a lot, certainly the, the painted Asian frogs. Now, the bigger wild bullfrogs that you get out here, not the ones that were breeding in the tank. Oh, well, that's a bit of a mix in there that we've got. These bullfrogs, you know, they're still a good size. You just don't don't see them much in the in, in the farm surrounding here. So when you get the rains come, what happens now is as soon as it's dark, you see all these head torches come on, and the guys are just the local guys are just walking up and down the two roads that uh, run down the side of our farm and and the front road as well, uh, and then they go across the back of the farm. And you can just see them with their, their long stick with the, the bottle and they just and uh, we see the posts on Facebook pages and then the next day you see the photos of all these frogs that have caught the next day and you're like yeah I saw you last night, oh I saw him last night, oh yeah, oh he got a lot didn't he? So if you just let them breed for the first few weeks 
um, you're looking at something amazing in, in terms of you know the, the ecology of your farm and that's what that's what we've done but we're almost saturated with frogs now and I, and I know they attract snakes but I won't get into that but because we've got so many frogs on the land now um, of course they go through the, the fence and onto the road the frogs like being on a clear area next to a, a grassy weedy wet area and that, they'll just stay there all night and even once you've walked past and got a few frogs you do a u-turn and come back within 20 minutes there's probably just as many there again you know we can't be hypocritical we catch these frogs ourselves one to eat and and two for putting on the hook sometimes uh, if we haven't got any bugs for the bullfrogs and this this will be bone of contentions with some of you some of those small frogs we feed to the bullfrogs the big ones That was some proper rain we had for about an hour. Uh, we had some rain yesterday, not a huge amount, it, but it was steady for a long time throughout the evening. So all the surrounding lands is a pre pretty much saturated. And then when we got this downpour, that's it, it's all just come straight on our land. And we're, we're full, we're, we're more than full. I think the only thing that we can fill up now is uh, the remaining bit of the the lake and a few of the other ponds which are higher up on the land but the water will come through there now so it's brilliant right, let's get these traps in we're too late to fish today toon as always got pulled away on an errand so uh, i still don't want to leave the shrimps in the traps if we've got any because if you leave them in overnight then they'll they'll perish by the morning oh hang on a minute i've got to let a couple of goats out Well, there's a few jumping around in there. That's not too bad. I was just going to let the goats out for a quick half an hour on the really thick pasture that they don't normally get out on, but that, uh, that weather still sounds a bit bad. <laughs> I don't know whether I got that on camera, but there was a fish down there. I've just disturbed that. So that's a good sign. I reckon there's about 20 in there. You generally don't get the really big ones. They tend to get eaten by the, the fish. But it's a good sign that there's so many shrimp in the lake. If you've got plenty of shrimp, then they're obviously finding enough food. And then every fish known to man, well, they, they all eat shrimp. Sometimes you'll see a, a shoal of fish chasing thousands of shrimp as they all break the surface and they're, they're smashing into them. It's, it's, it's quite, quite amazing to see. Right, I'm gonna shove these in a bucket and then they'll survive till tomorrow. And then we can impale them on some hooks and catch some food for tomorrow. Well, that's good. We got enough bait for tomorrow. So we'll get the rods out if tuna doesn't get pulled away off the farm again and then we should be having fish for dinner tomorrow. If you ever get the chance to try one of these, this is my favorite mango. Now normally you associate mangoes, green mangoes with being unripe. This, this is fully ripe, any more than this, and it's, it's, it's gonna be overripe. And you eat the whole thing apart from the stone inside, and you'd think it'd be sour, but it's, it is a little bit sour, but it's very, very sweet and juicy as well. Give them a go. It's so good. We're growing one of these trees on the farm, but they take ages. I think it's about four years old. And it looks like we might get some fruit this year for the first time. But Toon just got given these by an old lady in the in the village who we've given stuff to in the past. So it's nice to get something back in return. It's uh, totally out of the blue. We've got a bag full of them. So I'm going to be absolute gluttony for the, for the next couple of days.